Hello and welcome to the Scottish Man to Man channel. In today's video, you join me as I head out on a sea fishing trip with friends. With me on this trip is one of my best mates, Danny, a face well known to subscribers of this channel. Danny's brother-in-law Connor was on the boat, who was fairly new to sea fishing, and our captain for the day was Alistair, a good friend of Danny's. Alistair had been kind enough to invite us out on his rib to help him catch some mackerel to use as bait in his lobster and crab pots, known as creels in Scotland. We all love eating fresh fish, so we intended to keep a few mackerel for dinner that night, and if we managed to catch any pollock or cod, they would be for the eating too. We had arrived at the location Alistair wanted to try first. It didn't take long for the action to kick off. Some location. Is your moustache still attached, Danny? <laughs> that didn't take long. How, take how long, long was that? 30 done. seconds, first even, drop. Is it jelly? Well, it's not a big one. The first fish landed was a nice pollock of about two pounds. Danny was still setting up his rig and asked Alistair for a weight. Alistair, Thinking Danny was referring to the fish, proclaimed a couple of pounds, to which Danny thought he was being charged for the lead weight he required. I had set up a rig with three large feathered hoops, aiming to target the bigger fish lurking in the depths. That rod's way too small. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, on the other hand, loves a challenge and had opted to use the lightest rod on the boat, his super light spinning rod with his bait caster reel. For anyone watching this that isn't familiar with sea fishing, this definitely is not the recommended tackle. Whee! Whee! Double pollock. We were off to a great start with Alistair and Connor both landing good eating pollock and then Alistair hooked into one of the best eating fish around. Oh, that's a good fish. Is that a good fish? It's cod, is it? No, oh, yeah, low cod, wee wee. Little cod. Yeah, Danny, that is a little cod. I know if you had that one, Danny. Steven Spielberg filmed things smaller than that. He wants it on your Knowing we would be eating well for the next couple of days, it was time to move on and keep searching for mackerel. Suddenly we came across a sight I personally have never seen before. A large and dense cloud of moon jellyfish that spanned hundreds of metres in every direction. The cloud was so dense that the jellyfish were essentially sitting on the surface of the water. As we passed, Alistair and Danny noticed a massive shoal of fish sat below the cloud on the fish finder. Could these be the mackerel we were looking for? Finding the fish was only half the battle. Now, we had to figure out how to get our hooks past the jellyfish. Right, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Look! You ready? You ready? <laughs> it doesn't go. It won't go. Yeah, look at that. Look at the state of that. Catch him, don't just see him, Danny. Come on. We had shifted to the edge of the jellyfish cloud in the hopes we might reach the shoal below. Alistair was the first to hook up. Oh, great. And I was close behind using my spinning rod and a heart oh, jig. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm using single hook. <laughs> come on, man. Danny, come on, let's see you lose your rod. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh! Danny's gonna lose his rod. That is a big mackerel. Come on, go on, Danny. Go on then. <laughs> Holy cow! Look at that. Look at that. Danny had officially kicked off the mayhem with a full string of mackerel on his light rod, and the fish just kept coming. I had swapped over to use one of Alistair's larger boat rods, 
as our aim was to stock up on bait for the rest of the year. As we fished on, I wondered what exactly was attracting the mackerel to this huge cloud of jellyfish. Now, I'm no marine biologist, but I have a theory. To my knowledge, mackerel don't eat jellyfish, nor do they have a symbiotic relationship where both species help each other out in some way. So, this leads me to believe that the shoal of mackerel was using the cloud of jellyfish as cover from airborne predators such as gannets. But, if you have an alternative theory, I'd love to hear it, so let me know in the comments below. Oh, yeah, there we go. One of the reasons I love fishing so much, especially in the sea, is I always see something new or interesting. This is the last time. That's the biggest mackerel I've ever seen. Please don't throw that away. Do you know what that's hooked on? Yeah, I've just noticed. <laughs> I just wow. noticed. <laughs> I caught the biggest mackerel of my life by accident. Wow. I've never. Oh. See? You learned a tip here. There we go. <laughs> Le leave your clips open, kids. You'll catch more fish. <laughs> this is great. How did you manage to do that? It's the biggest mackerel of my fishing <laughs> career as well. By this point in the day, we'd almost caught enough mackerel for the bait. So from now on, we would release any fish that was fit and healthy. This should illustrate just how dense this cloud of jellyfish was. Even the mackerel struggled to swim through it. Look, he can't even get back. He can't get through, look at him. Oh my God, what a mess of fish you've got there, Danny. The mackerel just kept coming and the action was non-stop. Mackerel are a migratory species of fish that come to the UK waters in spring and early summer to feed, before eventually heading on to warmer waters to spawn in the autumn. Mackerel are closely related to the tuna family, making them plentiful, delicious, and great sport to catch. Eventually, we were stocked up on mackerel, and Alistair decided it was time to go to a nearby reef and try once again for some bigger fish. I would still use a trace of several hooks, but in this case, I would bait each hook with a strip of mackerel hopefully enticing any big and hungry fish out of the reef for a nibble. But sometimes things don't always go the way you plan, and I found myself stuck on the bottom on the very first drop. Right, okay. <laughs> don't worry, I've got us on an anchor. <laughs> While I played a game of tug of war with planet Earth, the lads managed to land one small pollock, but the reef was fairly quiet. It wasn't long before we found ourselves back at the jellyfish cloud for one last stint of madness. You in already? <laughs> you lassoed him. Good effort, Danny. Take skill, that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. That's instant. See you. We were almost ready to wind up and head for dry land, but there's always time for one more surprise. Come on, little jig. You gotta make this one count. It's gotta be a big one like Danny's. And we're in. We're in. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I got two of my wee thing. Oh. No, no, it's got two hooks on. It's got a treble and an assist. <laughs> Still fair chuff though. Oh, it's going to make it double, eh? Are you going to drop it down to the last one? Well done. Cheers. 
Thank you very much. That was great fun. Okay. What an incredible fishing session it had been. We were all exhausted and stinking of fish, typically a sign of a brilliant day out. As we headed back, I wasn't sure what was in more pain. My shoulders from winching so many fish, or my sides from all the laughing. A huge thank you to Alistair for hosting us on his boat. It was a real treat and he's an absolute topper of a bloke. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe to the channel to catch my next adventure. But until then, tight lines and take it easy.